BMW, known as the ultimate driving machine, everyone's aware that they drive superbly. But unfortunately, they're also known for acronyms like Burn My Wallet, Bavarian Money Waster. They're very well known, in some cases with the wrong engines, to burn through money faster than Anna Nicole slurping money from her billionaire husband. But fortunately, many new late model BMW engines have been vastly improved on reliability. Sadly, in fact, though, there's still five key BMWs and some of the engines that are that disastrously unreliable that you're definitely going to want to avoid them like the plague. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. The first one on my list is this beautiful little hot rod right here, dressed in white. Very attractive car. Clearly has the stance, and it's clearly the E90 generation of BMWs, the 3 Series. Let's take a quicker look, and I'll explain a little why you don't want to buy this car. I mean, clearly, the E90 has a very contemporary design theme. It looks great with the upgraded, new-style, rounded headlights. Of course, you still got the angel eyes and the kidney grills. And a very stylish-looking front bumper. Alloy wheels, signal markers. Of course, look at the beautiful mirrors and one-touch access with a sunroof on top. Circular on the back and you have classic tail lights with a set of dual exhaust tips. And what in fact is this disaster in BMW's lineup? Well, it's actually the 335 like that. And unfortunately, the first generation of the 335 used an engine they called the N54. Horrible. It was a twin turbo, three liter, six cylinder, and it actually was one of their first attempts at using twin turbocharging. And sadly, they realized how, how quickly and badly this engine hurt their reputation that they decided to turf it quickly, turn it into an N55, which also wasn't great, but it was in much improved. What you don't want to go for is the earlier generations like the 07s, 08s, a couple of years where they used that N54, lots of issues. And it wasn't just restricted to the 3 Series, you could also find it as well in the 5 Series. But it's that N54 that you find under the hood that was the real culprit. Yeah, the rest of the structure was solid, the gearbox was good, whether it was manual or auto, they are fairly reliable. The problem was under the hood, water pumps, thermostats, oil filter housing, gaskets. There was a couple O-rings, one side on the engine, one side on the cooler, and they flatten and then they start to leak. You'd have water, coolant oil, everything mixing or leaking. Of course, you'd have wastegate rattle when you turn the car off, grrr, it kind of rattles and clinks. And then you have a problem with that. That means pulling turbos, and that's a big job. You also had lots of issues with oil pan gasket leaks as well as valve cover gasket leaks and coolant hoses, every which one would potentially leak because they were snapped together, had these nice plastic key fittings that eventually would split crack. And they were impossible to take apart as well. Very maintenance intensive car, constantly under the gun of and the guise of maintenance meant that you always had to fix leaks. If it wasn't leaking from here, it was leaking from there. If it wasn't there, something else, or even a check engine light would pop up. Stay away from the early generation, anything with the designation 35. 35 in the 3 Series, 5 Series meant that you are probably getting the N54. Don't walk. Run! And the second one on my list is what's parked right behind me here. Now, what we're looking at here clearly is a BMW X5. Right there, as you see pretty clearly, not at all X5s are the same. Now, X5s, you have to believe, because it's a mid to upper level in terms of the range, that it's going to have more technology. So... When things start going off the rails, they start getting expensive. And what I would say was the older generation X5s are really more problematic. Some of the earlier tech, the iDrive systems were antiquated. You had the sticky buttons inside, so all the buttons would get sticky and the, the, the material would wear off the buttons. But also, when you look at some of these, the older generation, you could get an optional third row, and you could also get an optional air ride suspension, so it was a self-leveling, so as you put more weight in there, the airbags in there would allow and make sure compensate and keep the vehicle flat and level, so as well you get your high beams and your high lighting all aimed in the same direction, so it didn't aim it and jerk the car up like that. But the earlier generation X5s were good and they weren't. Depending on the particular drivetrain, I actually had one of these with a 35D. So the diesel engine was good for about 220,000 kilometers and then the wheels literally fell off. These air ride suspensions as well, I ended up having to do it three times. Airbags go, you come out and the car's sitting on its rump. And then what you have to do is spend a whole lot of money. There's also an air compressor. Not here, but on the other side in the passenger, and there's relays and fuses. And there's a lot of things, level switches, that keep that system running. When any one of them stop going, it's more diagnostic time in the shop. At 200 bucks an hour, nobody wants to pay that. That just gets downright expensive. 
So X5s in general, I wouldn't recommend unless you really need that higher level of performance, technology, but more specifically, it's not all X5s. And even this one's a little newer, so if you go back a generation, it's specifically related to the engine. But let's take a look. X5s do give you these enhanced tail lights. It does give you a wider stance and the vehicle looks more aggressive. This particular X5 comes with a set of beautiful exhaust tips like that. And of course, as you circle around, you'll notice they have that nice edge along there, beautiful rims, plastic painted covers there, as well as a beautiful rocker panel that flares out. Look at these beautiful mirrors, LEDs, beautiful vents there as well. And if you look, it's the X-Drive 50i, which does give you a gorgeous interior, but it's the engine that is going to cause you some heartburn. And it's a 50 series car. The newer ones get a little better, a little better, and it's not exclusive to the 5 series. The 50 series, typically you'll find them in the 5 series cars, 6 series cars, 7, as well as the X5s, X6s, and X7s. That's an optional engine. It's the twin turbo V8. That's right, 4.4 liter, impeccable performance, but chocked full of issues. Any guesses on what kind of issues you can get with that 5.0 drivetrain? Well, let's circle around and take a quick look over here and I'll explain some of that. Number one, it's a V, obviously, and not all engines are a hot V, but this one is. And a hot V just means that's in the V8 and they put the turbos in the valley of the engine to allow for shorter airflow on the exhaust side to get the turbo spinning faster and then shorter back to the intake to get the boost going back to the engine even quicker. Basically translates to much better performance, overall quicker, less turbo lag, but it's that hot V that causes all kinds of problems because it generates so much heat on the exhaust side, it ends up cooking the heads, the plastic. Everybody knows BMW has a lot of plastic under the hood, it starts to melt down some of the upper end plastic wiring harnesses, and even worse in the valve guide seals on, in the heads is what really starts to take a toll. And that's what keeps your oil down in the engine rather than going into the combustion chamber. So especially the earlier generations that they had less shielding. Now that's been slowly improved and enhanced over the years, but the earlier generations had less shielding and the heat went right into the engine. It meant accelerated oil consumption. It actually meant also battery drain would happen prematurely with these vehicles. And another big issue you'd experience here, other than fuel injectors failing in the high pressure fuel pump, you'd have other issues. Yeah, the timing chain, the dreaded timing chain rattle and failure, which just generally meant that you would pile up your pistons and valves and it was game over. Engine toast. So fortunately, if you wanted to get into the latest generation, they have enhancements. They have better shielding, better fueling, better cooling. Everything has been readdressed and the car gets better and better and better. But what I would what I would generally say is the N63, particularly the older you go, the worse things get. It's ugly, big ugly with a capital U. So basically what I would say, stay away from N63 twin turbo V8, unless you're getting a lease, unless you're getting a very late model unit, or unless you just generally need that level of performance because it is impressive. Anyway, the N63 in any of those 5.0 models. And here's the next one on my list right here, this beautiful little black car right here. What is that? I mean, it looks pretty and everything, right? Let's take a look around and maybe it'll shed some light for you. As you circle around, you look at this beautiful car, I mean, obviously, somebody's gone and debadged it, so you don't have the label on it. But this could be anything from a 320, 328, maybe a 330. And what is this generation? Well, let's just say, you know, anywhere from a 2011 to 2017 is an engine that this car carries that you definitely want to avoid. Now, it looks pretty. It's full of enhancements. And what this actually does feature is a turbo four-cylinder engine. That's right. But let's take a look around. Yeah, you do have these beautiful tailpipes. Back when they still built them and they were real, you have this nice chrome touch down there. And of course, BMW in all its glory. You do have these beautiful taillights that are actually LEDs and circle down, of course, a revised design from the old E90 generation. This is a little newer. And the interior is cleaner with the latest iDrive system. Of course, you still get the beautiful sunroof, pretty standard size for BMW, one touch accent. And look at the mirrors. Beautiful sight lines coming down the front. And of course, kidney grills with your conventional design, but it's not the E90 generation. You can tell the headlights are a little sharper, a little crisper. They now have LEDs and it's just an updated, upgraded particular design theme. Yes, what we're looking at here is a 2016 BMW and the beautiful outgoing, silky smooth, naturally aspirated six cylinder engines were replaced by this engine called the N20. The N20 is a mess. 
and that's where things went wrong. Yeah, it was smooth, silky, VBTI, twin scroll turbo, very well performing as well as fuel efficient, but there were some problems with it. So you didn't have too many problems in the back end. You had a rear differential. This was rear wheel drive, no issues there. Then under here, you had the transmission, no issues there. That was the upgraded ZF Auto or a manual gearbox, very reliable. The issue was under the hood there in the engine compartment. Of course, what did you have? Well, it was a triple four, two liter engine. And you know what? It was a great runner. And the later models did get a little better. But the early generation of that N20 had all kinds of problems. Look on the forums, you'll find lots of people talking about suctioned up oil filters. You know, they get in there, the oil filters, the oil filter services were way too long for BMW and their recommendations, and they were just collapsed and basically crushed into oblivion. So oil filter collapses was an issue. The oil filter housing leaks were an issue with coolant and oil again, similar to many other outgoing models. You also had the big problem. And there was an alleged lawsuit against BMW by many owners due to the timing chain issues. So especially the earlier generation, and they did sort of fix some of that later on. Now the cars weren't without their trouble either way, but the later generations did get better when they realized that the plastic timing, timing chain ramps were brittle and would fail prematurely. And those timing chain ramps usually meant they would crumble, break apart, and essentially leave the engine going boom because the valves and the pistons would collide and there'd be nothing left. Then you basically had a hunk of metal, all aluminum up front, that you had to replace for the tune of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. The N20 in that 2011 to 2017, don't bother. And yeah, sadly, 3 Series, 5 Series, and some of the X models also had them as well. And the next engine is what's in one of these vehicles here. This engine that we're talking about that's in some of these are clearly the 4.4 like we're looking at over here. It's a 4.4 or the 4.8 liter V8 engines. Yes, they're naturally aspirated. Yes, they package them in a lot of BMWs from X5s. You can find them in the 5 series cars, 6 series cars in the 650s, 550s, 645s, 545s, lots of variations. And that dictated whether it was a 4.4 or the 4.8, but they're all the N62 is where the problem arises. And some of it is just, just overly complex, underpowered engine, but more importantly, the issue is valve guide seals. They smoke up, they leave a lot of smoke and cause a lot of problems. You wind up with carbon buildup over here. There's also a coolant cross pipe in there that's extremely hard and labor intensive to access. And it means huge dollars when you're paying $200 shop rate to get that fixed. You basically have your vehicle sitting here for weeks. Sometimes you got to take out a third mortgage just to pay for that thing. Now, you also get the secondary air injection system on these as well. That seems to cop out and a whole host of different check engine lights that basically mean you're constantly in the red zone just trying to stay on top of some of these repairs. So any of this generation from 2004 to 2011 that typically run the V8s that are naturally aspirated in the 4.4, the 4.8, I would avoid them like the plague. Okay, and the next one, here we go. And I'd throw an honorable mention for the S85, that's the V10, but the engine's so legendary and so great that it'd be bad just to throw that one under the bus. So it has such huge potential, we're gonna leave that one alone. The engine, in fact, that we're talking about in some of the worst cars are the car right behind me. And there it is. What we're looking at here is a three series carrying the diesel engine. You can also get it five series and X vehicles. But there we go. Look at this one, been road hard, put away wet, been banged up pretty good, been scratched up pretty good. This was not a loving consumer owner of this vehicle. Look at the front end. It's all banged up right there. Obviously, oh, they put the cute colors there, the M colors, and look, even the mirror is pretty beat up. But the problem isn't the way this car looks. Is The problem is the engine that's under the hood of this particular vehicle. And what that is, is it's a diesel. The older engine is the M47, and the new engine is a B57, which is vastly improved. But this engine was a problem for many reasons, one of which was carbon fouling, it gets plugged off. Another reason they talk about was the actual, um, the actual wastegate under the hood, which is what regulates the pressure, the boost pressure. That wastegate would plug open, and then you'd have a situation, it would plug open and you'd reduce boost, because boost, instead of going into the engine, goes outside the wastegate, goes outside the back door, and then you don't have the pressure, and you don't have the power, and you lose performance. 
So sadly, bad waste gates can be costly to repair too, and they're often associated with turbo repairs, repairs or replacement. We also can't forget the check engine lights, oil, filter housing issues, as well as pan gaskets, leaks, oil, antifreeze. Those are all typical BMW specialties. But the big issue here is what's underneath the hood. And this engine is the N47, which runs from about 2007 to about 2014. It's their turbo diesel. It either comes in a 1.6 or a 2 liter, depending on the market. But that is the problem. And the big problem is allegedly lawsuits and lawyers are chasing BMW down because of timing chain, alleged timing chain failures. They stretch, they stretch, they stretch, and then pop, and then they go. And then if you have piston and valve collision, that basically means your engine is toast. Fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 down the drain. And when these cars are five years old, they're not even worth that kind of money. And sadly, the N47 equipped BMWs, as mentioned in many different models, is the car or are the cars you want to avoid here. And with all of that said, check that out. You'll love that. That's in fact why the latest BMW engine is one of those that makes it even more reliable than a Honda. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.